good morning students today in the front end design zv.net we will discuss following topic the topics are plr cts cls managed and unmanaged code so first of all uh, these are the contained clr means common language runtime cts means common type system cfl means framework class libraries cls means common language specification managed and unmanaged code native code and msil microsoft intermediate language so these all things we will discuss in this lecture so first of all uh, we will start from plr that is the common language run time dot net framework provides run time environment called plr or common language run time it provides an environment to run all the dot net program actually clr provides the environment to run all the dot net programs the code which runs under the clr is called as managed code so whatever the programs we are runs under the clr is called managed program and the programs we are running outside of the you know clr is called the unmanaged code programmers need not to worry on managing the memory if the programs are running under the clr as it provides memory management and thread management so if the program is running under the clr the program need not to worry about the new man managing the memory this all things will be taken care by the clr that is the common language run time clr uh, uh, also provides programmatically when our program needs uh, memory CLR allocates the memory for scope and deallocates the memory if the scope is completed. So whenever we are required memory, CLR allocates the memory, and it also deallocates the memory if it is not you know in use. However, uh, this is done by the CLR and CLR sees whenever the memory is required and when it should be. Uh, deallocated language compiler for example c sharp vv.net j plus or c plus plus and many more so language compiler will convert the code uh, or program to microsoft intermediate language actually in the uh, we have seen as in the architecture in the uh, first layer all the programs are there or you know we can write the programs in many language like c++ c sharp uh, vv.net j plus like this so actually these languages compiler are there which will convert this source code into the intermediate language or microsoft intermediate language code in turn this will be converted native code by the clr so first of all language compiler will convert the code into the msil and this msil clr actually convert this msil into the native code so it describes set of data types that can be used in different dotnet languages in common cts this is the cts common type system common type system is it describes set of data types that can be used in different dot net language in common so cts ensures that the objects written in different dot net languages can interact with each other so you know actually dot net provides the facility for interaction of the different languages so there is a need of common type system that is why the cts has uh, introduction in this dot net so this common type system why this common type system has uh, mean to say has put there because with this cts this languages can be interact with each other 
so for communicating between programs written in any dotnet com uh, complaint languages the types have to be compatible on the basic level okay so this type means to say common type system must be there so that this dotnet framework can understood it very well so the common type system supports two general categories of types there are two general categories one is called value types and another is called reference type value types and reference types so first of all we will see what is the meaning of value types value actually directly contains their data and instances of value types are either allocated on the stack or allocated in line in a structure value types can be built in implemented by the runtime user defined or enumeration so value types can be built in data types you can say value types user defined or enumeration reference types reference types stores a reference to the values memory address and are allocated on the heap value type is stored in stack reference type is stored in heap so reference types can be self describing types pointer types or interface types the type of a reference uh, type can be determined from values of self describing types self describing types are further split into arrays and class types the class types are user defined classes boxed value types and delegates now we will come to the framework class library which is also called fcl fcl is the collection of reusable object oriented class libraries and methods etc that can be integrated with clr also called the assemblies later on we will discuss assemblies it is just like the header files in c c plus and packages in the java so this uh, fcl you can say it is just like the header files in c c++ and packages in the java installing dotnet framework basically is the installation of the clr and fcl into the system when we are installing dotnet framework it is basically we are installed installing clr and fcl into the system now we will discuss cls that is a common language specification so cls is a subset of cts that is a common type system all instruction in the cls that is a common language specification that is instruction of cts is written in cls code manager uh, invokes class loader for execution dotnet supposed to kind of coding one is called managed code and another is called unmanaged code So first of all, we will see managed code. We have also discussed managed code earlier. Let us just uh, redefine it. The resource which is within your application domain that is managed code. The resources that are within domain are faster. The code which is developed in .NET framework is known as managed code. This code is directly executed by CLR with the help of the managed code executor. any language that is written in dotnet framework is managed code managed code uses clr which in turn look after your application by managing memory handling security allowing cross language debugging and so on what is unmanaged code the code which is developed outside dotnet framework is known as unmanaged code the code which is developed inside dotnet framework is known as managed code the code which is developed outside dotnet framework is known as unmanaged code applications that do not run under the control of the clr are said to be unmanaged and certain languages such as c++ can be used to write such application which for example access low level functions of the operating system background compatibility with code of vb asp and form are example of unmanaged code unmanaged code can be unmanaged source code and unmanaged compiled code unmanaged code is executed with the help of wrapper classes wrapper classes are of two types tcw that is form callable wrapper and rcw that is runtime callable wrapper wrapper is used to cover difference with the help of 
PCW and RCW. Form callable wrapper unmanaged port and runtime callable wrapper unmanaged port. This is a simple pictorial representation, but we have discussed that .NET framework is having CLR and uh, FCL. CLR can be further categorized into the CLI common language infrastructure, GC garbage collector, JIT just-in-time compiler, CLS that is the common language specifications, and uh, you can say this uh, CTS. Now we will discuss two more topics like native code and MSIS. Native code, the code to be executed must be converted into a language that the target operating system understands known as native code this conversion is called compiling code and act that is performed by a compiler under the dotnet framework however this is a two stage process with the help of msil and jit the source code with the help of the compiler of the languages is converted the code into the msil that is called the microsoft intermediate language and this Microsoft Intermediate Language code is, you know, sent to the GIT that is called the just-in-time compiler. And just-in-time compiler is actually converted into the machine code. So what is MSIL, that is a Microsoft Intermediate Language? It is language independent code. When you compile code that uses the .NET Framework library, you don't immediately create operating system specific native code. Instead, you compile your code into Microsoft Intermediate Language code. The MSIL code is not specific to any operating system or to any language. Okay, so this is all about thing. Uh, in the next topic, we will discuss exception uh, handling and uh, code access security. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Here, uh, I will uh, stop.